In this program we pay tribute to a quiet, self-effacing man who was born Henderson Roundtree. He changed his name to Chick Henderson and went on to become one of Britain's most popular singers in the late 1930s. I'm stepping out with a memory tonight To paint the town the way we used to do I'll dine at the old cafe where we had so much fun And order cocktails for two instead of the usual one Then after dark, in a handsome through the park While reminiscing, I'll be kissing you a lot of folks may think that I'm crazy, well maybe they're right, but I'm stepping out with a memory tonight. Dick Henderson was born in West Hartlepool in the north of England at the beginning of the First World War. As a boy, he loved to sing and was very active in the church choir. He entered a local talent contest at the age of 20, and he was heard by band leader Harry Leader, who immediately signed him up for the band. This was in 1934, and the following year, Chick began recording with the band.
Patrick singing I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles with Harry Leader and his band. He made a number of records with Leader until he joined Joe Loss's band in September of 1935. He cut his first record with Joe a month later in the London studios of HMV. It was called The General's Fast Asleep. for the general and his army of tin soldiers. Chick's first ever recording with Joe Loss. Note that he sings the general's fast asleep in what might be considered the American way, but could also be a little North Country as well. Chick and Joe Loss went on to record over 250 sides together. And even though Chick was Joe Loss's principal singer, he continued to make records on Columbia and Regal Xenophone with Harry Leader. He made this one with Harry in late 1936. <laughs> Was it much too sweet to miss? And 
Did you mean that remark that you whispered in the dark? You said you'd be absolutely on the up and up with me. Did you mean it when you held me while the night drifted by? Did you mean it? Hope you did, cause so did I. The mid-1930s is a period which is something of a nightmare for record his collectors and historians. Columbia used the name Harry Leader and his band on their labels, but Regal Xenophone issued their Leader recordings under a variety of aliases, including Wally Bishop and his band, the International Novelty Orchestra, and Mel Rose and his band. To complicate matters further, these sides were issued in Australia under all those names, and also as the Rhythmic Troubadours. In 1936, Joe Loss was contracted to Regal Xenophone, and from that time until 1941, all Chicks records with Joe were on that label. Their first record for Regal Xenophone was When Did You Leave Heaven, backed by You've Got to Blow Your Own Trumpet. Chick doesn't appear to have taken his own advice. From all accounts, he was a shy, modest kind of a person who liked to spend quiet weekends with his family and friends. But at least once a month, he was in the recording studios with Joe Loss, usually putting down four numbers each session. I dreamed of two blue orchids, two beautiful blue orchids one night, while in my lonely I dreamed of two blue orchids So full of love and light That I wanted to possess each tender Then my dream took wings And through a thousand strings Blue orchids seemed in a world apart but when I met you, something pale and blue came stealing from the meadows of my heart. I saw my two blue orchids, my beautiful blue orchids last night, and what a sweet surprise. When you looked at me, it was plain to see Blue orchids only bloom in your
my beautiful blue orchid last night. And what a sweet surprise when you looked at me. It was plain to see. It's only blue in your eyes. A measure of Chick's professionalism is that very few of these recordings with Joe Loss needed more than one take to be accepted. In July 1937, Chick made his first solo record, The Greatest Mistake of My Life, backed with Broken Hearted Clown. He was given the barest accompaniment, accordion and piano. In 1937, Chick Henderson won the Melody Maker poll as England's most popular vocalist, pushing aside the great Al Bowley and another favourite, Sam Brown. In November that year, Regal Zonophone issued the only other solo record by Chick, Old Pal of Mine, backed by After All These Years. This time, the usual positions on the record label were reversed and appeared as Chick Henderson vocal with Joe Loss and his band. Ah! 
Some experts consider that side, after all these years, to be Chick Henderson's best ever recording. But there is no doubt about his most popular disc. On the 5th of July 1939, the Joe Loss Chick Henderson combination recorded Begin the Begin. It became the only British dance band record to sell a million copies. By the time it was withdrawn from the catalogue, 27 different masters had been made to fulfil the demand. When they begin the beginning, it brings back the sound of music so tender. It brings back a night of tropical splendor. It brings back a memory evergreen. I'm with you once more under the stars And down by the shore an orchestra's playing And even the palms seem to be swaying When they begin the beginning Again, this past all endeavor, except when that tune clutches my heart. And there we are, swearing to love forever, and promising never, never to fall. Moments divine, what rapture serene Till clouds come along to disperse the joys we had tasted And now when I hear people curse the chance that was wasted I know but too well what they mean Oh, don't let them begin the beginning. Let the love that was once a fire remain on ever. Let it sleep like the dead desire I only remember. Begin, begin, begin. 
can we suddenly know what heaven we're in when they begin the big Chick Henderson's greatest hit. A critic at the time remarked, Whenever I listen to it, I get the feeling that this was a session when everything went right, just right. A memorable song built in an unusual sequence, pulsating rhythm from the Joe Loss Band, and those barking chords backing the vocalist, and Chick himself singing a difficult song with beautiful control. All adding up to what I consider to be a truly memorable record. And so say all of us. We continue this story next week with part two of The Life and Music of Chick Henderson.